In the 1963 film HUD, director Martin Ritt and cinematographer James Wong Howe paint a desolate picture of small town West Texas life. Never has the West looked so bleak and as empty of hope as it does through Howe's lens. He renders a flat picture of the landscape, a place where everything from the livestock to the small towns to a way of life is dead or dying. Based on the novel Horseman Pass By by Larry McMurtry, published in 1961, the movie makes the book's minor character Hud Bannon the lead, and he's a hard-drinking, womanizing, unrepentant SOB. And the film centers on Hud and his ongoing clashes with his principled, well-respected father Homer Bannon, a Northwest Texas cattleman played by Melvin Douglas. When an outbreak of foot and mouth disease puts the family's cattle ranch at risk, Lonnie, Homer's grandson and Hud's nephew, is caught up in the conflict and forced to choose which man's footsteps he will follow. And then there's Alma, the family's housekeeper, one of the few that can go toe to toe with Hud. She's not taken in by his charm and she sees right through him and he knows it. I've done my time with one cold-blooded bastard. I'm not looking for another. And all of this happens on the Bannon Cattle Ranch and the surrounding fictional town of Vern, Texas. And that land and the way of life it represents is something that is slowly receding into the distance as the weight of progress and generational change undo the code old men like Homer lived by. And as HUD's 1958 pink Cadillac convertible tears across the Texas panhandle, we see the present on a collision course with the past. Homer, he drives an older model pickup truck. And this town, it seems like a place on the edge of extinction. Unpaved streets, the old movie theater, the bus depot, and an isolated ranch where two men will never see eye to eye. Shot on location in the tiny town of Claude, Texas and its surrounding areas, the vast emptiness of the landscape becomes a symbol for Hud's character. As an early revisionist Western, critic Emmanuel Levy observed that Hud bridged the gap between the more naive, less cynical films of the 1950s and early 60s and the more realistic and challenging movies that came later in the decade. In the majority of classical Westerns, the ethics are clear and defined. You know who's good and you know who's bad. The revisionist film looked to paint a moral gray. The white and black hats aren't so easy to identify, if they exist at all. And in this respect, HUD challenged the production code edict that a bad guy or a character of quote unquote low morals had to repent or get what was coming to him. Because HUD neither repents or gets his comeuppance. Out there in the West Texas panhandle, HUD raises hell. He terrorizes Alma, alienates Lonnie, and as the foot and mouth spreads among the ranch's cattle, the herd must be culled, leaving the ranch and Homer empty of purpose. And when Homer dies out in the middle of a barren road, Hud eulogizes him by saying, He couldn't have made it. Lonnie, any way in this world, he couldn't have made it another hour. Paul Newman never understood why young boys had posters of HUD on their walls. He played the character as a straight villain. But HUD's anti-hero antics appeal to a new generation of post-war youths who no longer believe the myths their parents told them. And it's out there at that ranch, with Homer, Alma, and Lonnie all gone. HUD is left alone with everything. And maybe that's just how he wanted it. There are 8 million stories in the cinema cities. This has been one.